Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Adding Fractions, Including Variables. Another title might be Adding Fractions That Involve Variables. So a long time ago, you learned how to add fractions. One half plus three halves, or one half plus five sixths. We learned how to add fractions with numbers. We used fractions constantly in solving real life problems. We use fractions all the time. Here, we're going to learn how to add fractions together, but when the fractions involve variables. And the first time a student sees this, it looks like a completely foreign concept. But I'm gonna show you by the end of this lesson that you already know how to do this. You've probably just never actually put pencil down to actually do it. Let me show you how easy something like this is. Let's say that I give you the fraction 2x divided by or over three, and I'm gonna add that to another fraction, which is also 2x over three. Now remember, don't forget what this is representing. X is a variable, it can represent anything. If I pick a value of X is equal to one, then this fraction becomes two thirds plus two thirds, because if X is one, then two times one is two, right? Two thirds plus two thirds, we know how to add those numbers, right? But if X is five, then this becomes 10 thirds, two times five is 10, and this becomes 10 thirds, we know how to add those. And X can also be negative numbers, right? So X could be negative one or negative 10 or, or negative, negative one half or something. And whatever value we put for X in here, then we're going to get some fraction out and we're gonna add it to some fraction. So don't get scared by seeing letters in your fractions, they're just placeholders. The rules of adding fractions and subtracting and multiplying and dividing, all of which we're going to do, they follow the same rules you already know. When you add or subtract fractions, you must have a common denominator. Now look at this case, we already have a common denominator. So how do you add fractions? Usually, if we say, uh, let's say one third plus one third, what do we do? Well, the denominator stays the same, and then we add the numerators, one plus one, and so the answer we get is two thirds. Here, we're gonna do the same thing. We have a common denominator, so the answer is gonna have the same denominator. And we're gonna add these numerators. 2x plus the other 2x, and all of that is in the numerator of the answer. But you see, now we know how to add 2x plus 2x because these are like terms. And because they're like terms because they both involve x to the first power. So we add them, two plus two is four, so it's four x over three on the bottom. And that is the final answer, four x over three. Do you see the parallel? It follows directly from you are what you already know. You must have a common denominator. In the first problems, I'm going to give you problems that already have a common denominator, but if the fractions don't have a common denominator, then you have to make them have a common denominator, just like for numbers, in order to add them. And what this means is if I pick some number for x, let's say five and five, so this becomes 10 thirds and 10 thirds, right? What are we going to get? By the way, let's just take that example. Five for x, five for x, 10 thirds plus 10 thirds, what does that become? 20 thirds, right? 20 on the top and three on the bottom. But if I put five for x here, five times four is 20, I get 20 thirds. So you see the answer predicts exactly what I would get for any value of x that I put in here. That's why this is the answer, all right? And this kind of thing, adding fractions, it is so crucial. I cannot tell you how many times in advanced you know, engineering classes, I have big expressions, and you have to add fractions that have variables all the time. You're just gonna have to believe me on that one. Let's take a look at the next problem. Let's say we have 5y over 2, and we're gonna add that to 6y over 2. We see right away that we have a common denominator between these two fractions, so whatever the answer is, it's going to be over 2. We keep the common denominator. We add the numerators, 5y plus 6y. Now these particular things have uh, they're like terms, they're both y terms, right? So five plus six is 11y over two. That is the final answer. For any value of y I put in here and calculate the answer with numbers, I would get the same thing if I put the same value of y in here and get the answer right there. All right, let's move along to something that looks hard but actually is not. 10m over seven plus, here's negative four m in the numerator over seven. So don't worry about the plus minus, just treat it as anything else. You have a common denominator, which is seven. So the answer is gonna be over seven. So I have to add these numerators. What am I going to have? 10 M plus from here. And what am I adding? Negative four. So put the negative four in parentheses to make it a little more clear. Now what happens when you have plus minus, plus sign right next to a minus? It just becomes a minus sign. 10 M minus four 
over seven. And actually you can see I made a mistake right away. Everybody makes mistakes. You catch your own mistakes. I caught mine. Sometimes you don't catch them. You see, it's 10M plus negative, not just negative four, negative four M because that's here as well, right? So I have to have an M down here when I take the plus minus. So what do I have? I have, these are like terms. 10 minus four is six M over seven. If you're unsure how to add and subtract like terms, like 10M minus 4M, go back to those lessons. We've covered that before. Because they're like terms, this is like 10 monkeys minus four monkeys, six monkeys left over. And so the answer is 6M over seven. All right, let's move along. Problem number four. This one's a little more complicated. What about 4K plus three? And all of that stuff is over two plus 3K over Two. Now it looks more complicated, but you got to shake the idea that this requires something new. It doesn't. The denominator, this is just a complex looking fraction, but it's still a fraction. The denominators are the same. So the answer is going to have a two in the bottom. And I have to add these numerators. So it's going to be this numerator, 4k plus three, and then I'm going to add it to this one. And now I ask myself, can I combine like terms? Of course I can. I have 4k, 3k, those are like terms, 7k plus 3 over 2. Now, as much as you'd like to combine and simplify this, you really can't. Uh, I shouldn't say you can't. You could break it apart. You remember we were breaking these things apart? But if you break it apart, it'll be 7k over 2 plus 3 over 2. And that doesn't simplify any further. There's nothing else I could do there, even, even if you did. I mean, you could break it apart. You could say, I guess I'll just do it. You could say 7k over 2 plus 3 over 2 because common denominator, add the numerators, this is the same as this. But nothing simplifies here and nothing simplifies here. So there's really no reason to break it apart. I would say this is probably the best answer. And with that, we are halfway done with this lesson. Let's take a look at 9b over 4 plus 2b minus 3 over, again, 4. The common denominator is, again, still in place. So what do I do? I'm going to add these guys. The denominator is going to be a 4, and I'm going to add these numerators. So I'm going to have 9b plus this numerator, 2b minus 3. But I have like terms. The b terms are like terms. 9 plus 2 is 11, so 11b minus 3 over 4. So 11b minus 3 over 4. Again, if I wanted to, I could break these up. I could make it 11b over 4 minus 3 over 4, just like we broke that one up. But none of that stuff is going to cancel, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Now here is where we need to start paying attention. 3z over 5 plus uh, uh, z over 10. Now how do we add these? You see, we do not have a common denominator, so we can't add them. Well, we can't add them right away. We have to do something first, just like regular fractions. How do you do it? Let's do a quick little review of what do you do. Let's change these things to be 1 5th plus 1 10th. See, the denominators are the same, but I just make it much simpler here. So how do you do this? Well, we want to have a common denominator, and we can pick any denominator we want, right? So I can manipulate this fraction. I can multiply top and bottom by 2. You can do that to any fraction, including algebra fractions. And what do you get? You get 2 tenths plus 1 tenth. Now we have a common denominator. You get 3 tenths. So you see, in this case, I only had to manipulate one of the fractions. I could get a common denominator easily. Sometimes you have to manipulate both fractions to get a common denominator. But here, you don't have to do that. It's a much easier situation. We could write 3z over 5, make your fraction bar a little longer, plus z over 10, because I know that 5 times 2 is 10. So I will choose to multiply top and bottom by 2, same as I did right there. And what will I get? What is 3z times 2? Well, we multiply the numbers as always. 6z, we've done that before, 10 on the bottom. And then we have z over 10. Now, look at this. If I gave you this problem, you know how to solve it. We have a common denominator, so 10 goes into the answer, 6z plus z. We have to add these numerators. These are like terms, z and z. So 6 plus the implied 1 here, 7z over 10. 7z over 10, and that's the final answer. Now, most students, when they look at this, they have no idea how to do it. It isn't even covered in some classes because 
it, it's, it's, I don't know why exactly. It, adding fractions that involve variables, I think it's because most students or books assume that because you know how to add fractions, it's very easy skill to transfer. But the first time you see a variable running around, you're uncomfortable multiplying top and bottom by two because you've never seen it before, right? It's like going to France. I mean, I have never, you know, I, I'm not a fluent French speaker. I may know a few words, but until I see a lot of examples and get confidence, I cannot speak with confidence. So by doing these problems, you can get confidence in what you're doing. All right, let's take a look at the last two problems. All right, what about 5g over 8 plus negative 3g over 2? Again, I have unlike denominators, but I know that 2 times 4 is 8, so I can make this into a common denominator. So what am I going to do? I'll have 5g over 8 and I'll add to that negative 3g, and I'll make this fraction bar a little longer over 2. And the reason I'm making it longer is I'll take this fraction, multiply top and bottom by 4. Remember, I can multiply a fraction by anything I want as long as I do it to the top and the bottom. So I will have 5g over 8, and then I'll have plus, what is 4 times negative 3? That's negative 12. But don't forget the g, negative 12g over eight. Now this is much easier. It has a common denominator. The answer will have an eight on the bottom, 5g plus this. Now here we have to take the training wheels off. We know it's plus a negative 12g, but we know in our mind that that is, is going to mean it's going to be a minus 12g. Because by now you should know that plus a negative just means minus. So here this is minus 12g. Now these are like terms, right? So I still have that eight on the bottom. What is five minus 12? Well you subtract uh, 12 minus 5, you're going to get a 7, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value, and don't forget you're subtracting g's there. So you say that you're subtracting them, you subtract as usual, sign goes with the larger absolute value, and we're subtracting g, so it's negative 7g over 8, and that obviously is a lot simpler than the original fractions we had. All right, here's our last problem for this lesson. 6h over 9 plus 2h over 3. All right, so we have unlike denominators, but I know that I can multiply by three and I can get a nine to make it match. So 6h over nine plus 2h over three. And I'm gonna multiply this fraction by three on the top and three on the bottom. And what that is going to do is it's gonna make it so I have 6h over nine plus, what is 2h times three? Three times two is six, so it's gonna be 6h over on the bottom nine. So what do I have here? Common denominator of nine. On the top, I have to add these guys together, 6h plus 6h. How do I add these? These are like terms. Six plus six is 12, but it's 12h that I'm adding together. Now you could circle that if you want, um, or you can say, let me rewrite this, 12h over nine. Remember, anytime you get a fraction answer, forget about the h. If it was just 12 ninths, you have to simplify, right? As much as you can. I can divide top and bottom by three. Nine divided by three is three, 12 divided by three is four. So the actual answer would be four times h over three. That's the fully simplified uh, version of the answer. This is correct, but it's just not fully simplified. So we have started the process of learning how to add fractions. And you can see that I have introduced literally no new rules. This is, I think, why a lot of teachers and a lot of books don't even teach this. But you are expected to know it when you get into more math down the road and physics and calculus and things. You just have to know this. But it's not always taught. And I think because in this lesson, I have not introduced any new rules. All of the rules are what you already know. You have to have a common denominator to add fractions. Once you do have a common denominator, then you add them as usual. If there's variables coming along, then you combine terms as usual. If you don't have common denominator, then you manipulate one of or both of these fractions. In this case, I only had to change one. But if I had, you know, a different number here, like a nine, a nine and a two, I wouldn't be able to just manipulate one. I would have to manipulate both fractions. We'll do problems like that in the next lesson. But you get the idea. And then you add them and then you simplify them. Simplify the answer down. But because variables are involved, the first time you see it, it looks weird. So let's practice this. Solve these. Follow me on a part two. We'll get more practice with addition of fractions that involve variables, and then we'll do subtraction and multiplication and division of fractions, again, also, that involve variables. And you'll find that we don't have any new rules for any of it, but we do have to practice it because the first time you see it, it looks weird, and we want to build your confidence. So practice these. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue building your skills.